Good afternoon, everybody. It's already it will be quarter past two in Poland soon. So good afternoon in Poland. Oh, sorry. Ah, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Great. So I think it is now quarter past two in Poland. So good afternoon in Poland and good morning in Argentina. Yes. Good morning. Yeah. It's yes. Yes. So, quarter past nine here. Yes. So we have a pleasure to have a guest from far away, from Cordoba, but not Spanish, but Argentinian. And Pedro Lamberti already visited us in Krakow a few years ago, like uh, I think six, yes. And uh, then I had the pleasure to visit Cordoba, which was one of the oldest universities in South America, yes? Is it right? Yes, really. Yes, yes. And then we had a lot of uh, discussion and interchange about the set of quantum mix states and now we have a pleasure to host him and he will tell us something about flows in quantum mechanics but in fact the richie flow in quantum theory so please uh, pedro the yes. floor the screen is yours uh, uh, in first place i would like to to thank carol for the invitation and to can participate in, 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 in your seminars. Uh, uh, from the past years, I was uh, continuous listening to the, the seminar. And I found really very interesting. Uh, I, I, in first place, I, I would like to take some minutes, uh, really one minute, uh, to show, uh, 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 to share a video of the place where I passing the pandemic time known la, uh, as La Cumbre. Uh, can you see uh, uh, the video? Yes, yes, we see, we see. Yes, nice. it's, it's very short. Okay. Looks nice, yes. Okay, when the pandemic passed, uh, all of you are welcome, invited to, to visit us. Okay, I, I will share the main... Okay, the, the, the title of the, this talk is about Richie Flow. Re really, it, it, the, the name or the title should be uh, deformation in metrics in quantum mechanics. Um, so this is a typical image of a mythological character known as Procustes, who is known as the master of deformation. And really this talk is about the concept of deformation maybe discrete uh, deformation of continuous. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, uh, the, 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 the talk is a little more uh, wide than, than the, only the, the Richie flow title, okay? Uh, well, this is the, 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 the contents of the talk. We will talk about uh, a little of Riemann geometry uh, rigid flow and some conclusions. Okay. Uh, the, the aim of the talk is about uh, the start to study the, the idea of metric deformation, both global and local. Uh, we will focus on the simplex uh, set of probability distribution 
and in the context of quantum state space. We will see also some general theorems, particularly from Schoenberg. And we will uh, talk about uh, Ricci flow in, in, in ju just as a prospection of some application of the Ricci flow in quantum mechanics. Uh, let, let's review some basic concepts. Uh, the, the main concept of this talk is um, the, the matrix, is the concept of metric space. The, this concept uh, has a long and frequent history. It, it dates back to Moritz Preshev and Felix Hauser at the beginning of the 20th century. And we will say that uh, a pair XT is a metric space. If X is a topological or, or not, in general, it's a set. Yeah, but in particular, is uh, more significant the concept of metric space when we talk on about a, a topological space. And D is, is a function from X times X uh, into the real number such that uh, is positive defined. The, the, the quality with zero is uh, only when X is equal to Y is symmetric and it verifies the triangle uh, inequality. If these three conditions are satisfied, we will call uh, to the function D a metric. Uh, in some sense, uh, the, the notion of metrics is non-local in, in the sense that the, the points X and Y no necessary to be uh, close to each, uh, to each other, okay? It is, we, we, we can measure the distance between two points uh, without uh, think that uh, the point X and Y must be close, okay? I say that to differentiate from the concept of uh, Riemannian uh, geometry. In the, in the case of a Riemannian metric, we have a manifold, technically a differential manifold, that uh, just is uh, something like uh, a generalization of the Euclidean space where we can take derivative. The, that is the, 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 the idea of the differentiable manifold. Uh, over a, a differentiable manifold, we have a lot of uh, a, a lot of structure. In particular, the most important is the metric that allows to to measure the distance be, between two neighboring points. Uh, an, another very important concept in or aspect of the differential manifold is that we have a, a coordinate system. So we can change the coordinate system and in particular, we have a, a transformation law for, for the different coordinates we can use in a manifold and we can measure the, the differential distance between, between two very close points through this expression. Yeah? Uh, G i j is called the metric coefficient. Uh, as it says here, uh, uh, these uh, elements of distance provide uh, a local notion of distance. To, to differentiate from the global notion of distance uh, given by uh, a metric space, okay? Uh, our interest, we will focus on two particular sets, the simplex P n plus one, uh, that is the, the, the set of discrete uh, this probability distribution defined here, and uh, the space of quantum state. We will work on these two sets. Okay, these two space. Both can 
uh, be given a, a differential structure. So we can think both uh, of this space as a differential manifold. Okay. Uh, for many years, we were working. In fact, uh, the, 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 the first point of contact with Carol was through the, the these uh, divergence. Uh, is known like uh, Jensen Shannon divergence. Uh, and a, a very, um, this uh, distance is defined over the simplex P n plus one. And uh, a very important property of the Jensen Shannon divergence is that uh, his square root is a, a really uh, a true metric for this uh, space. Okay. Uh, this is the definition of the Jensen Shannon divergence, uh, where H is the Shannon entity. Okay, it, it has a, a lot of uh, properties, and it, it was applied to a, a wide a, a set of problems uh, in quantum and classical physics. Uh, the, this divergence, the Jensen Shannon. Uh, lies into a, a particular uh, family of divergence known as the Caesar divergence. In general, a, a Caesar divergence is defined through the, this, this expression, uh, where uh, f is a convex function and is required that f in, in the point one is equal to zero. For the Jensen Shannon divergence, the corresponding function is given by this expression. So the, the Jensen Shannon divergence is an example of the Caesar divergence. Maybe you know the, the Kullback Leibler divergence is also uh, another example of the Caesar divergence. It, as I said before, the simplex pn plus one uh, has the structure of the differential manifold where the coordinates can be chosen in this way. Um, in fact, uh, we, we have a restriction over the n plus one number, p sub one, p sub two, etc. Uh, what is uh, the, the sum uh, of the p is equal to one. So we need only n coordinates to define uh, the set p n plus one. Over this set, uh, a very common Riemannian metric defined is the Fisher metric, which in local coordinates has this form. Uh, we, we, it is possible to, to map the simplex Pn plus one into this sphere through the uh, change of coordinates. Uh, and uh, a very important result is that the Euclidean matrix for the, 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 the R n plus one space when restricted to this sphere is the Fisher metric. So we can get some uh, geometrical information of the Fisher metric through the uh, Euclidean matrix restricted to, the, to this sphere. Uh, this is, that, that is a very important point. And, and in general, on a Riemannian manifold, we have a several geometrical notion, all derived from the, 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 the metric coefficients, such as uh, parallelings uh, given by the connection, the, the notion of extremal curves or geodesic, uh, curvature, and other very important geometrical concepts. That, that, that is the point, basic point of the uh, Riemannian geometry. One, one uh, consequence of having a 
a local metric is that to a, a, for, for a Riemannian manifold, we can define a metric in, in the sense of the metric space I talked before. Uh, the, the, the metric is given by this expression, where uh, is just a, a, a length, the, the length of a curve joining two points, P and Q. Yeah, and uh, of, of course, in, in this uh, draw, uh, the, the geodesic correspond to the, the line, uh, the, the pointed lines here. But in general, in, 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 in every Riemannian manifold, we, we can define a metric given by this expression. In particular, in the, for the Fisher metric, for the Fisher metric, the, the geodetic distance is given by this expression. Uh, this is uh, easy to obtain from the fact that the Fisher metric is the Euclidean matrix restricted to the is field in the uh, um, n plus one space. Okay, uh, th this matrix is known by physicists as the Wouters matrix. In particular, in the in the context of quantum state uh, space. Okay, I, I, we will back to this point. Later, later, okay. Uh, the, the connection associated with a metric in general in a Riemannian manifold is given by this expression. This is known as the Christoffel symbols, okay. Uh, it's only necessary to take the derivative of the metric coefficients to obtain the uh, Christoffel symbol. And it, from, a, from a geometrical point of view, uh, it has to do with the notion of parallelisms along curves defined over the manifold. Okay. A, a, a very important result is that the, the Jensen Shannon divergence can be expanded in different elements of the matrix in the manifold PM plus one. For example, it's easy to, to show that if we have two close probability distributions, uh, the jensen shannon divergence can be written in this way. A first term in, that involves the, co the metric coefficients, a, a second term that involves the Christoffel uh, symbols, and uh, this term, the, the four order terms, involves the curvature. Yes, but uh, it's enough to, to show these uh, two terms to, to show the, the relationship between the Jensen Shannon divergence with the different geometrical elements of the uh, Fisher matrix. Here it's important to, to, to see that uh, G is the Fisher matrix. Yeah. Uh, in general, the, the, this term is very common to all, uh, to every uh, Caesar divergence. The, this is an important point for the, the, the rest of the talk. Yeah. Uh, but of course, uh, theta y is, is um, the, the coordinates of the point P in the simplex P n plus one. Okay. In, okay. in, in, sorry? Yes. A simple, a quick question. If you take, for instance, well known distance of Buell, Buell's distance, then this term will be the same. The first, um, if you take the infinitesimal Buell's distance, uh, then of, it will classically, it will also be uh, given by the same expression as one, yes? In, in this one? Yes, yes. Yeah, the, 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 all metrics which classically are compatible with Fisher, yes? Yeah, uh, really, uh, uh, that, that, that's a very important point, Carol. Uh, this, is, uh, this expression is 
common to, in particular, this first term is common yes. to every Caesar mm -hmm. uh, divergence. Yeah? Or, 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 um, I say, if every Caesar divergence, when you take two very close probability distribution, can be expressed in this way. The, the, the first term in uh, the, the Taylor expansion of the divergence, of the Caesar mm -hmm. divergence, mm -hmm. have this structure. Yeah. This is common to every Caesar okay. divergence. Thank you. Yeah, but, but it's not the, the, the most general, okay? In particular, this contribution corresponds only to the Jensen Shannon divergence, okay? Um, well, uh, this is a simple observation that the Euclidean metrics can be written in this way. Uh, well, uh, we are assuming that uh, P has coordinates P sub Y and Q uh, has coordinate Q sub Y, okay? And uh, the, it's important to, to, to see this uh, structure. Well, the, 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 in, in the Euclidean case, the function G is given by the identity, okay? It is really, it's very simple. Uh, evaluation showed that is true, okay? But uh, I, I emphasize that uh, th this is a possible structure for the Euclidean matrix, okay? It, it is well known that uh, the set, the simplex P with the square root of the Euclidean matrix is a matrix space, okay? The, the first known metric is the, the Euclidean matrix. Similarly, the, the jensen shannon divergence has a, a, a very similar structure uh, to the, uh, the, the, the Euclidean, yeah? If, if we see this expression and compare with this one, uh, we, we can assure that they have uh, both the Euclidean matrix and the jensen shannon matrix has the, the same structure. Well, we change the function G to the identity to this one, to the logarithms of X, yeah? And uh, as we said before, the square root of the jensen shannon divergence is a matrix. So uh, this set, the, the simplex P and the square root of the uh, jensen shannon divergence is a metric space also. So in, in that sense, um, we can think that the map X to GX uh, with GX, uh, this one, is a way to deform here, we, we, we meet again the, 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 the word deforms the Euclidean matrix into the jensen shannon matrix. Yes, the, the important point is that both the square root of E and the square root of the jensen shannon divergence, both are metrics. Yeah? And we are passing from the Euclidean a matrix to the jensen shannon matrix through, through this map, okay? This um, allows us to, to define a, a new, this scientific observation allows us to define a, a family of diver, divergence given by this expression. We define uh, the divergence D sub G between two probability distribution through this expression, where we require that the function G uh, be a convex one, be a convex function, okay? Uh, this uh, requirement uh, guarantee that the divergence is positive definite, okay? 
uh, and obviously is symmetric. But uh, in general, yeah, that, that is in an important point, we cannot assure that this new quantity, the square root of the new divergence, be a true matrix in the sense that uh, we cannot guarantee that uh, it verifies the uh, triangle uh, inequality, okay? However, there is some condition that the, the, the function G must satisfy in order to uh, this quantity be a true ma matrix. And th that condition are given by the Schoenberg theorem. Uh, Schoenberg was a mathematician that worked with uh, von Neumann and he, he has uh, several theorem about uh, metric space. And th this theorem in particular is, is uh, very relevant to, to us, okay, for, for us. Okay, the, 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 uh, we, we need uh, first uh, a definition. Uh, we consider uh, X an arbitrary set, a function phi from X times X to the real number is, is called a negative definite kernel if it's symmetric, the function phi, and for any N uh, integer N greater than two, a, a collection of number belonging to, to X. Uh, here, uh, there is a mistake. Uh, it should be N, uh, an arbitrary number of points uh, belonging to X, and a collection of real number such that uh, it's sum equal to zero. And this equality inequality is true. Yeah? Th this equality is true, we, we call a definite, uh, negative definite kernel, okay? The theorem by Schoenberg say that the pair uh, XD is a metric space if the square, D square is a negative definite kernel, okay? Uh, uh, as, a, as a consequence of this theorem, we can, guarantee that the above introduced uh, divergence is a, a true metric if uh, this kernel is negative definite. Uh, in general, uh, it, it, it will depend on the function G, okay? But, uh, Using the, 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 the structure of this kernel, we can conclude that this condition is equivalent to this requirement, where C, C, J, uh, C, J, et cetera, are uh, the numbers uh, introduced in the theorem, okay? So it was necessary to check this inequality for every function G convex that we use to define the divergence uh, D, okay? But uh, the, the important point is that we have a criterion to, de to decide that uh, we have or not a metric uh, given by the uh, square root of the divergent D sub G, okay? In that sense, um, uh, he, uh, this, this family uh, open uh, the, the possibility of, of, have, of having a, a, a wide set of divergent defined over the uh, simplex P, okay? A, a, a question uh, we can do is, is the following. Is really this uh, new family, a true new family, in, in the sense, it have to do with the Caesar divergence? Uh, let's remember that uh, a Caesar divergence have this uh, expansion 
the, 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 in general, for every scissor divergence, for too close uh, probability distribution, this expansion is true. Okay. Uh, and for the uh, new family, D sub J, the, the expansion uh, up to uh, second order is given by this expression. All we require here is the function G be two times uh, differentiable. Okay. So uh, if D is a feasible divergence, it should be equal to this uh, first term in the Taylor expansion. So we arrive in, uh, to, to this uh, equation, uh, which can be integrating and the, 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 the integration of this equation give the following expression for the function G. And a, a very important point here is that this equation means that the, the only D sub G uh, divergence that uh, is a Caesar divergence is the Jensen Shannon divergence. So we really have a new family of divergence uh, because uh, if we define uh, this set, we had a, a, a wider set of divergence between uh, probability distribution. In, in so we can uh, conclude that uh, by using this expression, we deform the Euclidean matrix into a new family of divergence. Some of them uh, are two matrix, others uh, are not, okay? This is the first result uh, from our work. Uh, the, the details can be found here in, in, a, in a preprint we presently uh, sent to this uh, uh, website, okay? Uh, another very important consequence of the Schoenberg theorem is that uh, this is included in the, in the Schoenberg uh, theorem that uh, it is possible under uh, the condition this, this condition is satisfied, it is possible to, to define a map from the simplex P to a Hilbert space, where the map has the property that the distance measured using the uh, inner product defined of the Hilbert space, this distance where in C um, is defined through the inner product of the Hilbert space coincides with this distance between these two probability distribution, okay? So if we can map every uh, probability distribution in a family, in, in a set of uh, quantum state, for example, if H is the uh, a space of quantum states, we can map every uh, probability distribution into a, a family of quantum states. And the distance between these two states it's given by this expression. This is a consequence of the Schoenberg theorem, okay? For example, if we have P, this probability distribution, and this Q, another probability distribution, and we choose a basis for the Hilbert space, we can define the state phi and phi by uh, these uh, expressions, uh, really here we, we can include some phases, but this, uh, these phases are irrelevant. So for every probability distribution, we can 
define these states. And the, the angle between these two states is given by this expression, which can evaluate through this expression, which is the same that uh, the geodesic uh, distance corresponding to the Fisher uh, metric. Yeah, this, this is an example. Uh, but in, in general, we can define a, another distance into the Hilbert space that, or really another map that makes that the distance mutual using the inner products of the Hilbert space coincides with the uh, distance between two probability distribution. Uh, we work uh, some years ago uh, trying to generalize this idea to the set of mixed state, uh, mixed quantum state. Yeah. So we, we were able to, to define the, the Jensen channel divergence between two uh, mixed uh, quantum states. And that uh, measure. Uh, has been used in, in many areas, in particular in the theory of uh, networks. Um, that, that, that is a very interesting uh, uh, application of uh, these, these ideas. Okay. Um, let, let's see about the Fabini study metric. Yeah, may, maybe you know, but uh, in order to be pedagogic, uh, I will introduce the, 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 the Fubini study metric. Um, the, the, the Hilbert space Hn plus one is isomorphic to a complex projective space through this uh, equivalent relation. Yeah. Um, we, we will say that two states are equivalent if there exists a lambda, a constant, uh, different to, to zero, complex number, such that uh, the state phi is proportional to the state phi. In, in this projective space, the, the Fubini's 2D metric is defined through this expression. Um, let, let, let us observe that we are not working with a uh, normalized state. Uh, we will say that if, do, the, if two states are equivalent, the Fubini's 2D matrix is zero. Yeah? If two states are equivalent, the, the Fubini's 2D matrix is equal to zero. But if we restrict to the set of normalized states, um, it is possible to show that the differential between two very close states in the set of normalized, normalized states can be expressed uh, in a proportional form to the Fisher metric. Again, the, the, we, we, found, the, we, we find that uh, a metric that is proportional to the Fisher metric, yeah? So about the Fisher metric, we have the several uh, results. Every uh, system divergence is proportional to the Fisher uh, metrics. And in the, in the, in the, in the uh, space of quantum state, the, the Fubini 2D metrics also is proportional to the Fisher metric. In some examples, a particular um, system, uh, the, the, the Fubini study metric can be evaluated. For example, this paper uh, published uh, in two years ago, uh, the, the author uh, evaluates every um, coefficient of the Fubini study metric for uh, this system, a, a two qubit state uh, uh, system. Okay, and from the Fubini study metric, uh, they derived a, a several property of the quantum state corresponding to this system. Okay. The, really, the, these authors, uh, I think, are from Poland. 
Yes, from Tolu, yes. I believe. Yes. You, you, you know, Carol? The names, yes, yes. Okay. Um, let's go to the second part of the, of the talk. Uh, I, I mentioned the notion of uh, deformation. Uh, in, in the previous uh, part, for example, when we, when we define uh, these um, divergence, uh, we interpret the, the map X to a general function, or only with regard that G be um, convex. We uh, interpret, interpret uh, this uh, map as a deformation of the Euclidean metric into a new distance, okay? The, the, uh, uh, I, I would like to emphasize the, the concept of deformation, okay? Uh, in, in for the concept of rigid flow, the, the notion is a continuous deformation. Um, the, 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 the notion of rigid flow is very known because uh, through uh, this notion, it was possible to, to prove a, a conjecture uh, set by Poincaré in 1904. Uh, the, 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 the Poincaré conjecture say that a, a, a three-dimensional compact and simply connected manifold can be continuously deformed in a three sphere. Uh, the, the, the notion of continuously deformed uh, is equivalent to homeomorphic. Uh, that that, that, that means that every three dimensional compact and simply connect manifold is homeomorphic to a three sphere. Well, the, this conjecture took some time to be proved in, and recently in 2006, was proved by Gregory Pederman. Uh, and the proof of the Poincaré conjecture uh, was uh, reached through the notion of Ricci flow. The, the, the Ricci flow equation is this one, where R sub IJ is the Ricci tensor. Also, uh, a, a quantity can be evaluated from the metric of the manifold. Yeah, this is a possible expression for the, the rigid tensor. And the, the, the notion of the rigid tensor has to do with uh, the curvature of the manifold. Yes? Well, um, uh, the, the idea behind this expression is to allow to change the metric of the manifold through a parameter, an external parameter T. This, this parameter have nothing to do with any coordinate of the manifold. T is an external parameter. The, 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 um, there is a, a lot of things to, to say about the, the rigid flow. I, I, I am not a specialist, but um, to, 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 to give an idea of the rigid flow, we, we can say that uh, if the space is flat, the metric of the space remains unchanged. If the, the, the manifold has a positive cur uh, curvature, the manifold uh, contracts to a point. And uh, if we have a, a, cur a manifold with negative curvature, the manifold expands. Yeah? In, in the sense that we can make a, a map between a different manifolds uh, when the, 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 the reaching flow works, where the, the, the characteristic longitude of the, of the manifold increase or, or, or decrease or remain constant. Yeah, that, that is a, a, 
roughly uh, interpretation of the uh, Ricci flow equation. Uh, th there is a, a family of a particular manifold uh, known as Einstein manifold, uh, which has the property of being proportional, the, the, the curvature tensor is proportional to the metric. Yeah, the, the, every mm, manifold with this property is known as the, an Einstein manifold. Uh, some uh, very uh, relevant examples of Einstein manifold uh, for physics is, is uh, the, the complex projective space with the Fubini study metrics is uh, Einstein manifold and the unitary group of dimension n with uh, the killing cards and metric also is uh, an Einstein manifold. Um, the, these um, kind of metrics are uh, very relevant in the context of uh, general relativity theory. Really, uh, the, 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 the crucial points in, in, in general relativity is the, 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 the signature of the um, metrics is no uh, uh, Euclidean, uh, is um, Lorentzian. Yeah, but in general, uh, many mathematicians has work the idea of Einstein manifold in the context of differential geometry. Yeah, in particular for uh, an, an Einstein manifold, the Ricci flow equation has this solution where uh, uh, we assume that uh, the initial metric of the manifold is given by this metric, G sub zero. Uh, the, in particular, if we have an, an sphere, the curvature is given by this expression. So uh, one sphere uh, evolving uh, through the Ricci flow collapse, uh, collapse to a point at time t equal to the inverse of two, the dimension minus one, okay? So uh, I, I mentioned, for example, in, in this system, it is possible to evaluate the Fubini study metric. So, uh, we have uh, in, in that state, in, in that system, a Riemannian uh, matrix that is, uh, or that satisfies this condition. So we, we can expect that uh, in, in the set of parameters of the system, which defines the coordinates used to, to evaluate the Fubini study matrix appears this collapsing time. So uh, a, a question we are working is what what is what, which could be the, the interpretation of this time in the context of a, a physical system uh, similar to this one? Okay. Um, it is important to, to, to emphasize that the, 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 the Ricci flow uh, does not change the, the, the Schrodinger evolution. Yeah? The, this is an evolution for the parameters that define the state. Yeah? And possibly uh, to, to find an interpretation of this collapse, collapse in time in the context of phase transition. Okay, um, we, are, we are working in this uh, direction, but we, we have not resolved even, okay? Um, to, to conclude the talk, I, I don't know if I have time, uh, Carol. Uh, yes, well, you still have some, let's say uh, seven minutes. Okay, okay. Uh, Perelman, the, the, the person that showed the, 
uh, that proved the, the Poincare conjecture, he introduced um, the notion of uh, actually known as the Perelman functional and, uh, and have to do with the, with the following point. Yeah, let, 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 let us consider a, a two dimensional manifold. Uh, every two dimensional Riemannian manifold is a conformal, conformally pla a flat. That, that means that the, the, the arc element is proportional to the Euclidean uh, coordinates, to, to the Euclidean matrix. Yeah? Uh, this factor is known as the, the conformal factor. And if we use the, the Ricci flow equation for this particular case, we get for the conformal factor this one, this equation, which is uh, similar to the uh, heat equation, but with the with important point that uh, this uh, Laplacian is evaluated through the, this, met, the, 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 this metric, okay? It's not the, the, the flat Laplacian, uh, is given by this one. Okay, so uh, the, 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 in this context, we, we can conclude that the, 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 the Ricci flow have to do with the um, a diffusion pro, pro process, okay? The, the Perelman um, functional is given by this uh, integral. Uh, the, the, the interpretation of this uh, functional is the following. We have the metric G and a, a general function phi. And for this pair, we define uh, this uh, functional uh, where R uh, is the curvature of, uh, of the manifold. And here is the, the square of the gradient of the, the function P, but using the metric G, okay? The, this expression, when phi is equal to, to zero, the, this functional uh, is the same that the einstein hilbert action for the general relativity theory. Uh, but uh, in two dimensions, uh, the, the einstein hilbert action is not relevant. Uh, but uh, anyway, it is important to, to, to mention that there is a connection between the Einstein-Hilbert action with the Perelman function, functional, okay? Uh, if we study the uh, extremal condition for this uh, functional, uh, we get uh, these two equations, yeah? Uh, the, the, the proof of this uh, can be found in this book, very nice book about Ricci flow. Uh, and uh, the, the, this pair of equation is very, very relevant for the, the following. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, by, by using the, the form of the metric we suppose for the manifold, these uh, two equations can be uh, express it in this way. Yeah, there, there is uh, an, an evolution of the factor F, the conformal factor, through the this expression. Uh, from this, we, we can make uh, a connection with uh, the classical mechanics. Uh, the the Hamilton-Jacobi equation uh, reads in this way with you uh, the potential and uh, if we make the, the usual change into the hamilton jacobi equation uh, defining s uh, tilde uh, through this expression we can uh, rewrite uh, the hamilton jacobi in this way okay and if for the uh, flow, Ricci flow equation, we uh, propose 
this the composition of the function phi, we obtain this equation. So we, we can do an identification between the action S with the function phi and the potential U present in the Hamilton Jacobi equation with the curvature L. Yeah. We, we can extend this idea to the, the realm of the quantum mechanics, it's comparing the entropy, the, the, the Schrodinger functional written in this way. You, you know that the, 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 the Schrodinger equation can be obtained from the extremizing this functional and uh, proposing a, a wave function of this way, we obtain uh, this equation. Here, uh, I forgot, uh, uh, really, th this term is which appear here when we propose uh, this wave function, okay? Uh, if we study the stationary case uh, through this condition, we can evaluate the Schrodinger functional in this way, and uh, we, we were able to, to prove that the Schrodinger functional is the Perelman functional uh, plus a kinetic term. Yeah, really, the, the all this uh, development uh, was done for two dimensions. The, the 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 objective of our work is try to uh, extend this uh, relation for higher uh, dimension. Okay. Well, uh, I, I think I, I don't have more time. Uh, so uh, some conclusions. We study the concept of deformation through uh, a map that change uh, the Euclidean uh, matrix into a, a new family of divergence. Uh, we describe the idea of uh, collapsing times uh, and it is possible to, to give some physical interpretation. This is a question, no, no, I, I don't have any answer yet. Uh, and we present um, a connection between Schrodinger uh, equation and the Perelman functional for two dimensions. Uh, the, the idea is uh, to uh, ask for uh, possible extension of this idea to higher dimension. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And um, uh, I think I think that uh, this is thanks in in Polak. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Pedro, Pedro Walter. Uh, thank you for a very nice talk. Let us open the talk for the discussion. So uh, there are many questions I could pose, but let me first ask if there are questions from the audience, please, who would like to pose a question. Let me welcome all the guests from Poland, from Krakow, outside Krakow, from Poland, and also from abroad. I'm very, very pleased to have you so many here among us. Who would like to start the discussion? Well, I don't see any questions at the chat. So look, uh, let me now use some time. First, you mentioned that you don't know exactly for what functions G, you would this triangle inequality will be satisfied. So do you have any oh. nice families of functions G for which you know that this is the case? Yeah, uh, really it's, it's very difficult to, to check uh, this inequality for any uh, function G. Uh, let's uh, recall so that- Any dimension N, dimension, the number N is also three. It has to be work for any N, yes? Yes, yes. In some cases, it's easy to prove this inequality, but in general, it's not easy. Yeah. Anyway, we 
uh, th th there is uh, some uh, extra condition that we require to the function G in order to prove this inequality. If we are able to prove this inequality, we can assure that this quantity is true metric. Mm -hmm. In general, the, 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 in some application, the, the condition of metrics is crucial. But in, in other cases, um, it is um, enough to, to prove the, the, this divergence in, in some application. Uh, uh, we were working with, with some students in, in the application of uh, this family of divergence to the study of time series. And to, to in, in particular, to study the, the stationarity condition for a time series, yeah? And in, in our conclusion is that for a, a wide family of G function, uh, this divergence uh, uh, allows to study the, the, the stationarity condition for a time series, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, but in, uh, going to, to your question, uh, Carol, is, is for every G, it's necessary to prove this inequality. Um, it, it is no uh, function that satisfies this um, uh, inequality. For example, uh, there, there is some theorems that uh, if G is a composition of two functions with certain characteristics, it is possible to prove that this equality is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in general, we, we, we have to work uh, each uh, G to, to investigate if this equation is true or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So there are two other questions from the audience. So first, I will ask Rafa Bistron to pose his question. I got a question which somehow stuck with me from the beginning, and somewhere, somewhere near the equation number one when there was expansion of infinitesimal distance square between P plus and P plus DP, because, uh, yeah, this one, because here we've got the, let's say, typical term of GIJ, which is just distance to form, but then there's additional term with Christopher symbols. And for me, the Christopher symbols somehow tell us how, how the, vectors change due to infinitesimal movement, not just the distances between points. And I don't see from where this term may come from. Yeah, uh, the, 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 uh, you, you, you can give uh, a geometrical interpretation of this um, expansion. Uh, the, the, this first time is uh, similar for every uh, Caesar divergence. Yeah, it, it can change um, the, the factor, but the, the, the important is, is this uh, uh, factor, okay? The, 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 the manical factor is not relevant. The, the, the importance is here. And in particular for the Jensen Shannon, uh, the, the good news let's say, is that we can expand the, the higher order terms uh, and give um, a geometrical interpretation, yeah? Um, be, be, because um, uh, these terms have to do win, uh, with the, the, the notion of, of connection. And as I say, that uh, the, the four other order terms can be interpreted in terms of the curvature of the manifold, yeah? Um, but th this is a property uh, of the jensen shannon divergence that, that we can express for two very close probability distribution in terms of the matrix, of the coefficient of the connection, and in terms of the curvature, okay? 
Uh, but, but in, in general, it's, it's uh, just a property of the Jensen channel divergence. Yes, thank in, you. in fact, yeah, uh, our experience is that the, the Jensen channel divergence is a, a, is a very particular one. Yeah. Um, uh, Carol mentioned uh, some time ago that uh, it was possible to prove that. Uh, the, the extension of the Jensen channel diversion between a uh, mixed uh, quantum state is uh, also a metric for the quantum uh, state space. Okay. And um, no, no uh, in, in the realm of the quantum theory, we don't have uh, so uh, many uh, metrics. Yeah, it, 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 and the Jensen Shannon, the square root of the Jensen Shannon, uh, extended to um, uh, missed quantum state is, is a, a true matrix between two missed uh, states. Okay. Uh, yes, thank you. Maybe last question by Diego, also from Argentina. Yes. yes. Hello, Carol. Hello, Walter. Very nice talk. Walter, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you go back uh, to five and six equation, equations? Here. Uh, here, here uh, then is, um, is a particular case in the, in the extension to, to the quantum realm because the, the states five and six are, com are commuting states. I mean- Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, this is a particular example uh, of really the, the theorem by Schoenberg um, allows that uh, to change this map uh, in order to uh, set up this uh, equality. Okay. okay. Um, uh, here I present only one example. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, where we, we take a probability distribution. And we construct uh, two states, and we uh, relate a, a theometrical property of the Hilbert space mm -hmm. with the Fisher metric. But if we were able to change this phi uh, function and define uh, the, the, the in, in other way the, the state phi and, and phi, okay. we can uh, replace. The, the theodetic distance between two distributions uh, for uh, other uh, distance. Okay, the, this is okay. only a particular example. Yes, yes. The, the possibility okay. is to change the, the, the map phi. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Walter. So, good. Uh, Walter, thank you, Pedro. Thank you very much. I think I will now close the, but wait, wait, wait a second, close the official. Talk. So let me thank you again for your nice visit from Argentina. And I would like to talk to you later, pose some other questions, but maybe first I will only announce next week we we'll have a talk by Morpho about morphophoric measurements in generalized probabilistic theories. The title is very complicated, we'll understand it soon, but because of this complicated title, there are going to be two speakers at least. So Wojciech Słomczyński and Anna Szymusiak, and they will share the duty to discuss the issue. And I hope we'll learn what morphophoric means. Yes, so see you again next week. So I hope Wojciech and Anna, you are there and you can confirm this title. So you will get the announcement soon. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you, thank you very much, so, Carol and, and all. Walter, yes, so now the official, uh, I don't want to uh, keep you any longer, all of you, but now uh, I will have just more, less, more private questions to Walter. Let me go now. So thank you, everybody. Uh, let me go back to the end of the talk. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, somewhere Perlman, uh, uh, down, down. Uh, yes. Uh, Here. Yeah. So, yes, still down. Uh, okay, let me, let me keep it here. Yes, yes. So look, we have this metric deformation and the 
this okay a function g of x and now look is it so that we can consider now a continuous transformation of the euclidean space for instance let's take the n equal to standard block sphere and block ball which is a rigid fixed three-dimensional object and now if we start this deformation can we understand this as a possible transformation in a continuous time to other metric which is obtained by this function g of x yeah, that, 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 that is a good point, Carol. I, I don't really know the answer yet, uh, but, but um, the, the, uh, um, a possible uh, work is to uh, use that, this idea in some particular cases, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, taking a two qubit system of uh, something like that. Yes, uh, yes. Right now, we only have this idea, but mm -hmm. we, we mm -hmm. uh, have to extend to the quantum system, to, mm -hmm. to some mm -hmm. particular system, okay? But then is it so that you have this flow in the continuous time? Yeah, it, 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 no. We, we, uh, we, we have two ways of changing the, the, the metrics. The, the first one is through this map. Yeah, yes, yes. and uh, I call this a discrete way, but, but uh, the, the, the word uh, discrete is not uh, the, the, the best, the best, but it is a way to, 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 to transmit an idea uh, that we cannot assign to the Euclidean matrix associated with this function to an arbitrary matrix associated with this function, yeah? Um, the, the, in that sense, this is a discrete change. But other point is to study how a, a metric can change continuously through the Ricci flow. In, in both cases, uh, uh, we are trying to apply for particular uh, systems, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, but uh, we have uh, not worked uh, on this extension to quantum system mm -hmm, uh, yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah? but uh, what will be also interesting to me is if you had a kind of continuous transition between one, let's say, Euclidean geometry, in the case of mixed states, it's like Hilbert-Schmidt distance. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. and to go, for instance, to whatever, uh, let's say this square root of uh, divergence, uh, Jensen channel divergence, or perhaps to Bure's Bure uh, geometry, uh, and how it will behave, let's say, in a continuous time. But this is only yeah. a just vague idea. And then look, here you write about Schrodinger equation. But the Schrodinger equation usually gives us the evolution of the uh, wave function or vector uh, uh, in time. Yeah, and here this, this, this is uh, yeah this this is a, 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 a time evolution in the space of parameters. Yes. It's not yes. the 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 the, the, the Schrodinger time. evolution. Yes, exactly, okay? exactly. Yes, this is what I want to clear. Yes, so it's a Schrodinger equation with respect to some fictitious time, which in fact it's not time, but it's a set of parameters. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, you. You. Okay. Uh, I mean. Uh, Independently of the uh, Schrodinger evolution, we can um, study um, how is the evolution of the uh, parameter space. Uh -huh. For example, in, in, uh, 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 just to say an example, uh, yes. could be this idea relevant for a study uh, phase transition, quantum phase, phase transition, where the parameter of the system changed in some way, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, really, we have no work uh, in, in some particular uh, example yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, good, good. Thank you. And then one more, okay, very simple technical remark. If we describe this Fisher classical geometry, I think the simplest idea is the following you have here one state let's call it uh, let's say zero and we have two other states let's say one and two here 
So if we had a triangle, yeah. and the distance of zero, let me change the color, from this point will be shortest. But of course, physically you say, if you have state zero, then any combinations of one and two, which is orthogonal to zero, is as distant as possible. So therefore, distance from any point here from this point is the same, which immediately implies that you have here like a sphere. This is now zero. Yes, and here you have a triangle which is octant of the sphere. So this is like quarter of the equator, which is the same distance from the pole. So I think this is the simplest way to explain this is to say that any point from this subspace from one to two, which is orthogonal to zero, is at the same distance. So I yeah. think such a picture, such a picture somehow it helps to understand this, yes? Because okay. now we have here, you have only a, uh, you see uh, the there are uh, meridians of the sphere and basically it, they show that any point from the equator is the same distance from the um, pole and this is easy to visualize for n equal three for n equal four is not so easy but you have a tetrahedron which has to be now put on this part of the sphere s3 which is of course not easy to see but the idea is similar uh -huh. 